We all call ourselves Kiwis, but how many of us have been lucky enough to actually see one in the wild? They are unique, they are our national icon, and they need our help. New Zealand has been the Kiwis only home for millions of years, and where once they were common, now they are down to only around 78,000. Not so long ago, not so much was known about Kiwi. Although New Zealanders cherish this quirky, flightless, nocturnal bird as part of our national identity, although it is immensely important as a taonga for Māori, although we take it for granted that Kiwi will always be around, in the early 1990s the species were in deep trouble, dying out on the mainland, and we didn't know why. When the spotlight went on to Kiwi, researchers and scientists quickly learned that they were disappearing from places where, not so long ago, they were common. They also discovered why they were disappearing, and oddly, that was good news. We knew what we had to do to turn the tide. Today, hundreds of people around New Zealand are working hard to save our national icon. New Zealand has five Kiwi species spread from the top of the North Island all the way south to Stewart Island. Little spotted Kiwi were probably once the most common Kiwi species, but today they only survive on safe islands and in wildlife sanctuaries. Brown Kiwi are found north of Whanganui in the west and Hawke's Bay in the east, though new populations have been established at Rimutaka Forest near Wellington and Pukaha Mount Bruce in the Waira Rapa. Rowi, also called Okarito brown kiwi, are the rarest of them all. Only about 250 birds are left and they only live in a small patch of forest near Okarito on the west coast of the South Island. Just south from there are the Haas Tokoeka, the second most rare kiwi. About 300 of them remain in the Haast Hills. The name, Tokoweka, comes from Naitahu and means weka with a walking stick. Three more varieties of Tokoweka have also been identified. Two of them Fiordland Mountaineers and one an island dweller, the Stewart Island Tokoweka. Last but not least is the largest of the kiwi species, the Roroa, or Great Spotted Kiwi, which holds out at the top of the west coast and also around Arthur's Pass National Park. Kiwi are versatile birds. Some live on the coast digging in sand, some live among snowy tussock high in the mountains, and some live in the many places in between. Forest, scrub, rough farmland, swamps, and even pine forests. All kiwi really want is a good supply of the food they like to eat. Insect grubs, crickets, snails, worms, spiders, fruit, and berries. There's even evidence that kiwi go fishing for kora, the small freshwater crayfish. It's easy to see where a kiwi has been fossicking for food. Telltale, funnel-shaped holes pepper the ground where its long beak has been. Or maybe the bird left another type of calling card. Kiwi's black and white droppings have quite a distinctive smell. Okay, so it's very strong and it's got kind of a, um, a real ammonia or even an oily smell, quite a pungent smelling poo. So if you're out and about and you find something like that, you might be lucky enough to have seen kiwi poo. One thing that makes kiwi so special is their biology, which is very different to most birds. Key features of, of the kiwi, which are unusual, is that the nostril is, is placed right here at the tip of the bill, just by my th thumbnail there. Most birds have their, their nostrils down at the base of the bill here, but kiwi are unique in having the nostril there right at the tip of the bill. And um, they have a really big sense organ through scent organ through here so they can smell really well. They've got these big long tactile whiskers here like a cat which helps them judge their distance between trees and things and burrows um, how wide things are. Their eyes are, are quite small uh, compared with the size of their head and uh, their eyesight's not particularly good and they've got these very big ears though so they've got very good hearing. So at, at night they use hearing and scent as their key senses. And then uh, they've got these minute little wings, so just really vestigial little wings here, and they've got this funny little claw right at the tip of the wing. They've got these very sharp little claws. Uh, these particular ones are somewhat blunt because this bird's living in rocky situation, but some of those can be really, really sharp. 
but um, this is their only defence is, is with their claws against cats and dogs. A unique to Kiwi is that they have no, no external tail at all, in fact you know, there's absolutely not even a, a bump there, so and they've got this really nice shaggy plumage. Female Kiwi are bigger than males and have a longer beak. Another unusual trait is that Kiwi, once bonded, usually pair for life. When ready to lay their egg, a pair works together to line the nest site, which could be in a burrow or a clump of vegetation, under a rock or in a hollow log. The nest is more elaborate than the sleeping dens, which are unlined and are often just under vegetation and on the surface of the ground. While the different species have some of their own quirks, all Kiwi are generally very territorial, and pairs will defend their home turf with razor-sharp claws. Kiwi call just after dark to mark their territory and find out where their mate is. A female has two functional ovaries, which is unusual in a bird. She produces a huge egg weighing 15 to 20 percent of her body weight and six times bigger than for most birds of her size. The two ovaries mean Kiwi can lay a second egg three weeks after the first. A female can lay up to 100 eggs during her lifetime. In two kiwi species, little spotted kiwi and brown kiwi, only the males incubate the eggs. All going well, after about 80 days, a fully feathered open-eyed chick emerges, a miniature replica of its parents. Even newly hatched, it is nearly independent and, within a week, will start to venture out of the burrow to look for its own food. But it's right there, in the burrow, that kiwi's troubles start. To begin with, about half of all eggs laid don't hatch, either because of natural bacteria or because the egg is disturbed. Then, even if a chick does emerge, 70% never reach six months. They are killed by the deadly teeth and claws of stoats and sometimes cats. Another 20% die from natural causes or other predators. That leaves just 10% of all wild chicks that make it to six months of age. And it's not over yet. Of those survivors, only half make it to adulthood. That means a tiny fraction, just 5% of the chicks that did hatch, become adults. 